Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. I'm going to take you through now firing up our WinSurse electrostatic generator. I'm not really sure how well you're going to see the sparks from that distance, so I'm going to give you a couple zoom-ins so you can see it from two different positions zoomed in and get a much better view of the spark going across the gaps. From this distance, you'll be able to tell how fast I have to turn it. You're going to be able to see, hear the cracks and the distance between the cracks and timing. Uh, so let me go ahead and give this thing a spin. I'm going to show you how well it works. There you go. So you can hear those cracks in the background. And I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on film at that distance. Let me give it a little bit of a faster spin. There you go. So there's a demonstration of our Wimshurst electrostatic generator. Now I'm going to, like I said, zoom in a few times. I want to kind of go with like why I'm building this, what I want to show you with this is that we're going to use this to generate high voltage current. Throw that into a transformer or a Tesla coil and broadcast that for a distance to our house. Have the Tesla home reception antenna, which you never see a picture of. You see the Warden Cliff Tower, but you never see the home reception antenna, which I've got one built. I'm going to show it to you if I can make it there. Uh, so we're going to use this to generate the voltage necessary from a windmill or the large scale model like I told you in the last video. So we're definitely going to use that for the long distance transfer of wireless electricity made directly on site from a generator right on site. Instead of having to build low voltage, throw it through a bunch of transformers, step it up into capacitor banks and back into our, our Tesla coil and back out again. This system cuts out a bunch of that. I've already got my capacitors. I've got the high voltage coming off of it at the right frequency or the right hertz that we're looking for. Uh, so let me get this uh, zoomed in for you. I'll show you that a little closer up. All right, so here's a nice zoomed in shot. Let me get this thing spinning for you. Those are nice, bright arcs going across there. I could extend the gap quite a bit. I haven't completed my handles off the other side yet, so I'm not going to move them until I've taken the discharge rod to both of these capacitors and made sure they're nice and clear. Because even after it's made a gap, a uh, spark across that gap, these capacitors still have a charge in them. You don't want to touch them, even though if you've watched them already spark. So there you go. There's a nice zoomed in shot. I'll speed it up just a little bit. So there you go. There's a nice zoomed in uh, clear view of the discharge between those two balls. There you go. Alright, here's a test of a much larger spark gap. Uh, that's about two thirds of the distance of a 2x4, so you're talking probably about two inches. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a crank and see how well it works. There we go. All right, so there's a good test of a two two and a half inch or so spark gap. Uh, let me zoom out real quick while it's sitting there just so you can see kind of in a better ratio exactly what that spark gap was. So there you go, that's a pretty large spark. Uh, like I said, about two thirds of the way across the two by four. Takes a little longer for it to charge up the capacitor to make that spark, but it's a good looking long arc that comes across there. A little faster here. So there, that's how to make your own Wimshurst electrostatic generator. Now, once we've got this complete, 
We're gonna now take this and we're gonna use this for some incredible science experiments.